So, welcome back to another episode. And this is going to be multiple episodes because I'm going to talk about the entire Dragon Quest Dragon Warrior series. Now, Dragon Quest is a huge series in Japan, but outside of Japan, it's never been quite as big. And also, as a note, I will show the original games, but I will also show the translated US games and DS games for footage to show some points. I will label which version you are looking at. So let's begin at the beginning. In 1986, the game that started it all was created by Yuji Horii at Enix in Japan and was actually influenced by PC games of the time such as Wizardry and Ultima. You play as a lone hero in the start and your mission is simple. Defeat the Dragon Lord and reclaim the fabled Ball of Light. What's amazing is when you first start off, you can actually see the Dragon Lord's castle when you leave town, just taunting you. The game is very simple by today's standards. There are no party members, and exploring the towns is done through your command menu to talk, access spells, and use stairs. Yes, there is a stairs button. You leave the castle to the open field map and fight monsters in turn-based combat, one at a time. You will gain experience to reach higher levels and gain gold to buy new items and equipment. Combat gets easier the high level you get, so be prepared to be in combat a lot. And the battle music is something that you will never forget for a lifetime, because you will hear it so much. And it was also the introduction of the slimes, which have become the mascot of the series now. So what is it about Dragon Quest 1 that caught on so much and made it a mega hit in Japan? First of all, artwork by Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball. And also, at the time, it was a vast adventure that you didn't need a PC for. You could play an RPG on console, and this is, arguably, the first console RPG. The game set the foundation for the entire series, such as saving at churches, stair sounds, and attack sounds. All these would become staples of Dragon Quest that would be followed on in every game. The game was ported to the MSX, Super Famicom, and Game Boy Color. Being such a hit, Nintendo brought Dragon Quest out to the NES in 1989, changing the name to Dragon Warrior because of licensing issues with the name in the US, with enhanced features such as battery backup instead of a password, and the graphics were changed slightly. The translation was done using Old English with mixed results. Unfortunately, the game was not a success in the US. It just never caught on with the audiences that might have been expecting a more exciting action adventure which Dragon Warrior was not. Nintendo even gave away the game for free with a subscription to Nintendo Power to get people into the game as they had overproduced mass copies of the game. I remember looking at Dragon Warrior back in the day in Nintendo Power and it just looked like something super special. I was very excited about it. And I was lucky enough that my sister and her at the time boyfriend took me across the border to Bellis Fair. And that's where I went to Famcom Games, a set up store in the middle of the mall that sold Nintendo games and there was a glass display case showing the recently released Dragon Warrior and it had a small diorama and artwork from the Japanese game. I was sold and I seem to be the only person who remembers Famcom games back then but if anybody remembers Famcom games please let me know. Now one year later in 1987 Dragon Quest 2 came out for the Famicom with a lot of improvements. The story is simple in that it takes place 100 years later and you play as a prince and your mission is to destroy the evil Hargon that has destroyed the neighboring castle. This time you have a party of three and you are no longer fighting one enemy at a time. Group battles were introduced which changed strategy in combat quite a lot and was a great change from the first game. The world is much larger, so much so that the original world map of one is an island in this game. And there's more variety in towns and dungeons are much more complex in size and no longer require a torch to be lit. Graphics and sounds are pretty much like the first game, but the music is better and the ship is introduced. Also, battery backup is now the norm and gone is the password feature entirely. Dragon Warrior 2 was released in North America in 1990, relatively unchanged, but what was added was a new intro of your characters walking towards the screen. Now, this is actually the game that I skipped two weeks of school back in the day. I made an entire episode on skipping school and playing video games, and Dragon Warrior 2 was one that I skipped a lot of school to play. 
The game was also ported to the MSX and Super Famicom and Game Boy Color. The series was popular now, and with that came Dragon Quest 3 in 1988, and it was taken to new heights. This time you are traveling in your father's footsteps to defeat the evil Baramos. You can have up to four party members and you can pick their classes. You can choose from fighter, merchant, to jester, to sage. There are quite a few classes to choose from. Once your secondary character hits level 20, you can visit a shrine and convert back to level 1, but you keep all what you learned from your previous class. This mixes things up and creates for some interesting cross-trained skills for your characters. And also as a note, this is the game that introduced the monster fight arena and betting on monster battles. Also different from previous versions is a day and night system. This creates for some tougher monster fights at night. And new quests also appear. At the end of the game, you are given the title Legendary Hero or Lotto, translated into Erdrick. There is a great reason for this. And I don't want to do any spoilers, but let me just say this much that the first three games are related in a very interesting way. Graphic wise, not much has changed vastly from the previous games, but they do the job and the music still continues to be perfectly fitting and memorable. The game was once again ported to the MSX, Super Famicom and Game Boy Color. When released as Dragon Warrior 3 in the US in 1991, Again, unfortunately, it wasn't the huge success they were hoping for, and it never lived up to sales figures and the reverence of the Japanese counterpart. In 1990, one of my favorites in the series was released on the Famicom, and that was Dragon Quest IV. You play five different chapters with different characters, and what's really cool is you get to learn about these characters' stories from Ragnar the Knight to Torniko to Loon, the merchant who is trying to open a shop of his own, to Mina the Dancer and Maya the Fortune Teller who are looking for the person who murdered their father. In Chapter 5, all these characters come together and do battle with the latest evil, Necrosaro. There's a total of eight characters to choose from, but only four are allowed in one combat party. Combat introduced AI controlled characters, which was a horrible idea. As in some battles, your characters would actually do some terrible tactics and get you killed. The day and night system is back for good, and many medals are introduced that are found all over the world and can be traded in for rare items. Transportation is interesting in this game as well. You can also travel the world using wagon, ship, and a hot air balloon. Later, it was ported to the PlayStation and Nintendo DS. The game again was a massive hit in Japan, but as Dragon Warrior 4 hit in the US in 1992, it did as usual reasonable, especially with next generation systems on the market. In 1992, Dragon Quest V made the jump to newer hardware on the Super Famicom in Japan. I remember seeing this game in video game magazines at the time and I was very excited for it, but I was kind of surprised that the graphics weren't a huge upgrade. It looked better than the Famicom, but it didn't blow you away visually. The story is where the title does shine as it takes our hero from birth to his teens to adulthood through the entire game. In fact, you even get married and have kids. Combat follows the earlier games, except you can only use three party members, but this time includes the monster recruiting. Now you can have monsters join your party and level up with you. Earlier monsters can be weaker, but the later ones you find can be quite fierce. Unfortunately, this would be the first of a few Dragon Quest games that were not brought over here after sales of Dragon Warrior 1 to 4. And at the time, I was upset that this was passed on. A ported version with updated graphics appeared on the PlayStation 2 and later on the Nintendo DS. Years later, playing it on the DS, I was shocked at how the story was really powerful and emotional at times. 